Hare Krishna everyone, Radha Lane, Iskon Houston, just down the pathway to Sri Sri Radha Nila Madhava's gorgeous temple. We're here with a room full of ardent spiritual seekers. We, we're a little late today because we were just having a good time talking about one of our friends who's traveling on vacation and connecting with Nitya and myself with pictures of how he just happens to be running into Krishna places and Krishna people and <laughs> he's laughing because Krishna's after him. We, I told him, Krishna's after you and he said, yes, you must be right because everywhere I go, Krishna's there. Now his mother just found out that there's a Dr Krishna person living right next to her practically. So this is it. We're on the right side of history, the right side of this path. Okay. Uh, Sanatana Goswami, welcome to all of you out in cyberspace. We hope you're healthy and happy and in full Christian consciousness. Uh, <clears throat> Sanatana Goswami glorified the Srimad Bhagavatam in a w the most wonderful way I've ever heard. It's called Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram. We read, it, we read it every day to help us go deeper into our understanding of what we're hearing, opening our hearts expanding our consciousness so that we can get pure love of God just by hearing attentively, without argument. Okay, here we go. And it goes like this. Sarva shastya vipi yusha Sarva vedaika satpala Sarva siddhanta ratnaja Sarva lokaika drikprida O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures Singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of precious gems of all conclusive truths. <coughs> you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu, Kalidvan Dudita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Padaya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of Prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Mareka bando mat sangin, mat guru man mahadana, man nistadaka mat bhagya, mat anandana mostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu tadayin atini chuchata kada hanamun chakada chin mam prem narit kanta yospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we're going deeper into the pastimes of Krishna Chapter 7, this is what? Trinavarta? Uh, is it? Trinavarta. <clears throat> mm. The Brahmanas, beginning with text 17. The Brahmanas, who were completely expert in chanting the Vedic hymns, were all yogis, fully equipped with mystic powers. <clears throat> Whatever blessings they spoke were certainly never fruitless. Purport. Brahmanas fully equipped <clears throat> Brahmanas fully equipped with the Brahminical qualifications 
are always yogis, fully powerful in mystic yoga. Their words never fail. In every transaction with other members of society, Brahmanas are certainly dependable. In this age, however, one must take into account that the Brahmanas are uncertain in their qualifications. Because there are no yogic Brahmanas, <clears throat> all yogyas are forbidden. The only yogya recommended in this age is yogyai sankirtana prayai yajanti hi sumeda saha. Bhagavatam 11.5.32 <clears throat> Yajna is meant to satisfy Vishnu. Yajna tat kamanonandanaha. Because in this age there are no qualified brahmanas, people should perform yajna by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Yajna sankirtana prayar yajanti hi sumedasaha. Life is meant for yajna, and yajna is performed by the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Text 18. <clears throat> One day, a year after Krishna's appearance, Madhya Yashoda was patting her son on her lap. But suddenly, she felt the child to be heavier than a mountain peak, and she could no longer bear his weight. Purport. <clears throat> Laliyanti. Sometimes the mother lifts her child, <clears throat> and when the child falls in her hands, the child laughs, and the mother also enjoys pleasure. <clears throat> Yashoda used to do this, <clears throat> but this time Krishna became very heavy, and she could not bear his weight. It is to be understood that Krishna was aware of the coming of Trinavartasura who would take him far away from his mother. Krishna knew that when Trinavarta came to took him and took him away from his mother's lap, Madhya Yashoda would be greatly bereaved. <clears throat> he did not want his mother to suffer any difficulty from the demon. Therefore, because he is the source of everything, Janmad Yasya Yataha, he assumed the heaviness of the entire universe. The child was on the lap <clears throat> of Yashoda who was therefore in possession of everything in the world. But when the child assumed such heaviness, she had to put him down in order to give Trinavartasura an opportunity to take him away and play with him for some time before the child returned to the lap of his mother. Text 19. <clears throat> Feeling the child to be as heavy as the entire universe and therefore being anxious thinking that perhaps the child was being attacked by some other ghost or demon the astonished mother Yashoda put the child down on the ground and began to think of Narayana <clears throat> foreseeing disturbances she called for the brahmanas to counteract this heaviness and then she engaged in her other household affairs she had no alternative than to remember the lotus feet of Narayana, for she could not understand that Krishna was the original source of everything. Purport. <clears throat> Mother Yashoda did not understand that Krishna is the heaviest of all heavy things, and that Krishna rests within everything. Matstani Sarvabhutani as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 9.4 Maya Dharmidang Sarva Jagat Avyakta Mortina <clears throat> Krishna is everywhere in his impersonal form and everything rests upon him nonetheless Nachaham Teshavastitaha Krishna is not everywhere Madhi Yashoda was unable to understand this philosophy because she was dealing with Krishna as his real mother by the arrangement of Yogamaya. Not understanding the importance of Krishna, she could only seek shelter of Narayana for Krishna's safety and call the Brahmanas to counteract the situation. <clears throat> Text 20 <clears throat> 
While the child was sitting on the ground, a demon named Trinavarta, who was his servant of Kanksa's, <coughs> came there as a whirlwind at Kanksa's instigation and very easily carried the child away into the air. <coughs> Purport. <coughs> Krishna's heaviness became unbearable for the child's mother, but when Trinavartasura came, Trinavartasura came, he immediately carried the child away. <coughs> this was another demonstration of Krishna's inconceivable energy. When the Trinavarta demon came, Krishna became lighter than the grass so that the demon could carry him away. This was Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, <coughs> Krishna's blissful transcendental pleasure. Text 21. Covered the, covering the whole land of Gokula with particles of dust, that demon, acting as a strong whirlwind, covered everyone's vision and began vibrating everywhere with a greatly fearful sound. <coughs> Trinavartasura assumed the form of a whirlwind. This is a tornado. This is like a tornado. With a, with a dust storm, the whole tract of land known as Gokula, so that no one could see even the nearest thing. Text 22. For a moment, the whole pasturing ground was overcast with dense darkness from the dust storm, and Mother Yashoda was unable to find her son where she had placed him. Text 23. <clears throat> because of the bits of sand thrown about by Trinavarta, people could not see themselves or anyone else, and thus they were illusioned and disturbed. Text 24. <clears throat> Because the dust storm stirred up by the strong whirlwind, because of the dust storm stirred up by the strong whirlwind, Mother Yashoda could find no trace of her son, nor could she understand why. Thus she fell down on the ground like a cow who has lost her calf, and began to lament very pitifully. Text twenty five. When the force of the dust storm and wind subsided, Yashoda's friends and other gopis approached Mother Yashoda, <coughs> hearing her pitiful crying. Not seeing Krishna present, they too felt very much aggrieved and joined Mother Yashoda in crying, their eyes full of tears. Purport. <coughs> this attachment of the gopis to Krishna is wonderful and transcendental. The center of all the activities of the gopis was Krishna. When Krishna was there, they were very happy, and when Krishna was not there, they were unhappy. Thus, when Mother Yashoda was lamenting Krishna's absence, the other ladies also began to cry. Text 26 Having assumed the form of a forceful whirlwind, <coughs> the demon Tr Trinavarta took Krishna very high in the sky. But when Krishna became heavier than the demon, the demon had to stop his force and could go no further. Purport. Here is a competition in yogic power between Krishna and Trinavartasura. By practicing mystic yoga, <coughs> asuras generally attain some perfection in the eight cities or perfections named anima, lagima, mahima, prapti, prakamya, ishitva, vashitva, and kama, vasayita. But although a demon may acquire such powers to a very limited extent, <coughs> he cannot compete with the mystic power of Krishna. For Krishna is Yogeshwar, the source of all mystic power. Yatra Yogeshwaro Harihi No one can compete with Krishna. Sometimes, of course, having acquired a fragmental portion of Krishna's mystic power, asuras <coughs> demonstrate their power to the foolish public and assert themselves to be God, not knowing that God is the supreme Yogeshwara. Here also we see that Trinavarta assumed the Mahima city and took Krishna away as if Krishna were an ordinary child. But Krishna also became a mystic, Mahima Siddhi. 
When Mother Yashoda was carrying him, he became so heavy that his mother, who was usually accustomed to carrying him, carrying him, could not bear him and had to place him down on the ground. Thus Trinavarta had been able to take Krishna away in the presence of Mother Yashoda. But when Krishna, high in the sky, assumed the Mahima city, the demon, unable to go further, was obliged to stop his force and come down according to Krishna's desire. One should not, therefore, compete with Krishna's mystic power. Devotees automatically have all mystic power, but they do not like to compete with Krishna. Instead, they fully surrender to Krishna and their yogic power is demonstrated by Krishna's mercy. Devotees can show mystic power yoga so powerful that a demon could not even dream of it, but they never try to demonstrate it for their personal sense gratification. Whatever they do is for the service of the Lord, and therefore they are always in a position superior to that of the demons. There are many karmis, yogis, and jnanis who artificially try to compete with Krishna, and thus ordinary foolish people do not care to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from authorities consider some rascal yogi to be Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. At the present moment, there are many so-called Babas who present themselves as incarnations of God by showing some insignificant mystic power, and foolish people regard them as God because of lacking knowledge of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Text 27. In the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it describes <coughs> the process by which yogis assu uh, assume mystic powers. Because Krishna is Yogeshwar, he has all the mystic powers in full. So the process is that if the mystic yogi meditates on one of Krishna's mystic powers perfectly, then Krishna gives him a little atomic particle of that mystic power. And therefore he can exhibit some mystic power you know, anima making himself lighter than air, or lagima making himself heavier than anything, or being able to go inside things, and all these different mystic powers. The yogis get them by meditating on Krishna's mystic power. Text 27. Because of Krishna's weight, Trinavarta considered him to be like a great mountain or a hunk of iron. But because Krishna had caught the demon's neck, the demon was unable to throw him off. He therefore thought of the child as wonderful, since he could neither bear the child nor cast aside the burden. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Purport. Trinavarta intended to take Krishna up in the sky and kill him. But Krishna enjoyed the pastime of riding on Trinavarta's body <laughs> and traveling for a while in the sky. <laughs> Thus, Trinavarta's attempt to kill Krishna failed, while Krishna, Ananda, Chinmaya, Rasa, Vigraha, enjoyed this pastime. Now, since Trinavarta was falling because of Krishna's heaviness, he wanted to save himself by throwing Krishna off from his neck, but was unable to do so because Krishna held him very tightly. <clears throat> Consequently, this would be the last time for Trinavarta's yogic power. Now he was going to die by the arrangement of Krishna. Text 28. <clears throat> With Krishna grasping him by the throat, Trinavarta choked, unable to make even a sound or even to move his hands and legs. His eyes popping out, the demon lost his life and fell, along with the little boy, down to the ground of Braja. 29. While the gopis who had gathered were crying for Krishna, <clears throat> the demon fell from the scry, sky onto a big slab of stone, his limbs dislocated, as if he had been pierced by the arrow of Lord Shiva, like Tripurasura. Purport. In transcendental life, as soon as devotees of the more, more, more Lord merge in lamentation, they immediately experience 
the Lord's transcendental activities and merge in transcendental bliss. Actually, such devotees are always in transcendental bliss and such apparent calamities provide a further impetus for that bliss. <clears throat> Text 30 the gopis, immediately picked up, the gopis immediately picked Krishna up from the chest of the demon and delivered him, free from all inauspiciousness, to Madhya Yashoda. <clears throat> because the child, although taken into the sky by the demon, was unhurt and now free from all danger and misfortune. The gopis and coward men headed by Nanda Maharaj were extremely happy. Purport The demon fell flat from the sky and Krishna was playing on his chest very happily, uninjured and free from misfortune. Not at all disturbed because of being taken high in the sky by the demon, Krishna was playing and enjoying. This is Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Bigraha. In any condition, Krishna is Satchitananda Bigraha. He has no unhappiness. Others might have thought that he was in difficulty, but because the demon's chest was sufficiently broad to play on, <clears throat> the baby was happy in all respects. It was most astonishing that although the demon went so high in the sky, the child did not fall down. Therefore the child having been saved virtually from the mouth of death, therefore the child had been saved virtually from the mouth of death. Now that he was saved, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan were happy. Text 31 It is most astonishing that although this innocent child was taken away by the Rakshasa to be eaten, he has returned without having been killed or even injured. Because this demon was envious, cruel and sinful, he has been killed for his own sinful activities. This is the law of nature. An innocent devotee is always protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and a sinful person is always vanquished for his sinful life. <clears throat> Purport <clears throat> Christian conscious life means innocent and a sadhu is one who is fully devoted to Krishna. 9.30 Bajetimam Bajetimam Anyabhak Sadhureva Samantavya Anyone fully attached to Krishna is a sadhu. Nanda Maharaj and the gopis and other cowherd men could not understand that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead playing as a human being and that his life was not in danger under any circumstances. Rather, because of their intense parental love for Krishna, they thought that Krishna was an innocent child and had been saved by the Supreme Lord. In the material world, because of intense lust and desire for enjoyment, one becomes implicated in sinful life more and more. Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajo Guna Samudva Baha. <clears throat> Therefore, the quality of fear is one of the aspects of material life. Ahara Nidra Baya Maitunam Cha. But if one becomes Krishna conscious, the process of devotional service, Shravanam Kirtanam, diminishes one's polluted life of material existence, and one is purified and protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Trinbatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. In devotional life, one has faith in this process. Such faith is one of the six kinds of surrender. Rakshishyatiti Vishwasa Hari Bhakti Vilas 11, 676 One of the processes of surrender is that one should simply depend on Krishna, convinced that he will give one all protection. That Krishna will protect his devotee is a fact. And Nanda Maharaj and the other inhabitants of Vrindavan accepted this very simply, although they did not know that the Supreme Lord himself was present before them. There have been many instances 
in which a devotee like Prahlad Maharaj or Dhruva Maharaj has been put into difficulty even by his father, but has been saved under all circumstances. Therefore, our only business is to become Krishna conscious and depend fully on Krishna for all protection. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Text 32. Nanda Maharaj and the others said, We must previously have performed austerities for a very long time, worshipped the Supreme Personality of Godhead, performed pious activities for public life, <coughs> constructing public roads and wells, and also given charity, as a result of which this boy, although faced with death, has returned to give happiness to his relatives. <laughs> Purport. Nanda Maharaj confirmed that by pious activities one can become a sadhu, so that no one will be happy at home. Oh, so no, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. Nanda Maharaj confirmed that by pious activities one can become a sadhu, so that one will be happy at home and one's children will be protected. In Shastra, there are many injunctions for karmis and jnanis, especially for karmis, by which they can become pious and happy, even in material life. According to Vedic civilization, one should perform activities for the benefit of the public, such as constructing public roads, planting trees on both sides of the road so that people can walk in the shade, and constructing public wells so that everyone can take water without difficulty. Now what are they doing? Burning down the Amazon rainforest. Hare Krishna, where we get our oxygen. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> one should perform austerity to control one's desires. And one must simultaneously worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus one becomes pious. And as a result, one is happy, even in material conditions of life. Text 33 Having seen all these incidents in Briyadbana, Nanda Maharaj became more and more astonished, and he remembered the words spoken to him by Vasudev in Mathura. Text 34 One day, Madhya Yashoda, having taken Krishna up and placed him on her lap, was feeding him milk from her breast with maternal affection. The milk was flowing from her breast and the child was drinking it. Text 35 and 36 O King Parikshit, when the child Krishna was almost finished drinking, Yashoda was touching him and looking at his beautiful, brilliantly smiling face. The baby yawned. And Mother the sky, the higher planetary system and the earth, the luminaries in all directions, the sun, the moon, fire, air, the seas, islands, mountains, rivers, forests, and all kinds of living entities, moving and non-moving. Purport. By the arrangement of Yoga Maya, Krishna's pastimes with Mother Yashoda were all regarded as ordinary. So here was an opportunity for Krishna to show his mother that the whole universe is situated within him. In his small form, Krishna was kind enough to show his mother the Virat Rupa, the universal form so that she could enjoy seeing what kind of child she had on her lap. The rivers have been mentioned here as the daughters of the mountains, the gowns, tud, dirty tree. It is the flowing of the rivers that makes big forests possible. There are living entities everywhere, some of them moving and some of them not moving. No place is vacant. This is a special feature of God's creation. Text 37 <clears throat> When Mother Yashoda saw the whole universe within the mouth of her child, her heart began to throb, and in astonishment she wanted to close her restless eyes. Purport. Because of, because of her pure maternal love, 
Mother Yashoda thought that this wonderful child playing so many tricks must have some disease. <laughs> she did not appreciate the wonders shown by her child. Rather, she wanted to close her eyes. She was expecting another danger and therefore her eyes became restless like those of a fawn. This was all the arrangement of Yoga Maya. The relationship between Mother Yashoda and Krishna is one of pure maternal love. In that love, Mother Yashoda did not very much appreciate the display of the person Supreme Personality of Godhead's opulences. At the beginning of this chapter, two extra verses sometimes appear. Evam bahuni karmani gopanam sham chayoshitam nandasya gehi bavride kurvan vishnu janardanaha In this way, to chastise and kill the demons, the child Krishna demonstrated many activities in the house of Nanda Maharaj and the inhabitants of Braja enjoyed these incidents. Evam sa vivride vishnur nandage he janardanaha kurvan anisham anandam gopalanam sajoshitam to increase the transcendental pleasure of the gopis and the, the gopas and the gopis, Krishna, the killer of all demons, was thus raised by his father and mother, Nanda and Yashoda. Sripad Bijayadwaj Tirtha also adds another verse after the third verse in this chapter. Bistarine ha karunyat sarva papa pranashanam. Bhaktum Arasi Dharma Gya Dayalus Twam Iti Prabho <coughs> Prikshit Maharaj then requested Shukadev Goswami to continue speaking such narrations about the pastimes of Krishna so that Krishna, the king could enjoy them from trans, to, to enjoy from them transcendental bliss. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the tenth canto, seventh chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Killing of the Demon Trinavarta. <laughs> Jay Sri Krishna. Okay. We we got a little late start, so I'm gonna go a little longer with permission from the local sages. Okay. Chapter eight. <clears throat> Lord Krishna shows the universal form within his mouth. So he doesn't do it just once. He, and still she doesn't get it. <laughs> the summary of the eighth chapter is as follows. <clears throat> this chapter describes the ceremony of giving a name to Krishna. It also describes his crawling, his playing with the cows, and his eating earth, and again showing the universal form to his mother. One day... Vasudeva sent for Gargamuni, the family priest of the Yadubhangsha. And thus Gargamuni went to the house of Nanda Maharaj, who received him very well and requested him to give names to Krishna and Balarama. Gargamuni, Gargamuni of course, reminded Nanda Maharaj that Kangsa was looking for the son of Devaki and gorgeously the ceremony would come to the notice of Kangsa who would then suspect that Krishna was the son of Devaki. Mm -hmm. To perform this ceremony without anyone's knowledge, and Gargamuni did so. So this means all the demons that were coming to kill Krishna that were sent by Kangsa, they didn't come back, so he didn't know <laughs> at this point. Later on he finds out. But at this point he didn't know what was going on. Okay. <clears throat> Nanda Maharaj therefore requested Gargamuni to perform this, this ceremony without anyone's knowledge. And Gargamuni did so. Because Balarama, the son of Rohini, increases the transcendental bliss of others, his name is Rama. And because of his extraordinary strength, he is called Baladev. He attracts the Yadus to follow his instructions, and therefore his name is Sankrashan. Krishna, the son of Yashoda, previously appeared in many other colors, such as white, red, and yellow, and he had now assumed the color black. 
because he was sometimes the son of Vasudeva, his name is Vasudeva. According to his various activities and qualities, he has many other names. After thus informing Nanda Maharaj and completing the name-giving ceremony, Gargamuni advised Nanda Maharaj to protect his son very carefully and then departed. Shukadev Goswami next described how the two children crawled, walked on their small legs, played with the cows and calves, stole butter and many milk products, and broke the butter pots. In this way he described many naughty activities of Krishna and Balarama. The most wonderful of these occurred when Krishna's playmates complained to Mother Yashoda that Krishna was eating earth. Mother Yashoda wanted to open Krishna's mouth to see the evidence so that she could chastise him. Sometimes she assumed the position of a chastising mother and at the, other ne at the next moment she was overwhelmed with maternal love. <clears throat> After describing all this to Maharaj Prikshit, Shukadev Goswami had Maharaj Prikshit request praise to the fortune of Mother Yashoda and Nanda. Nanda and Yashoda were formerly Drona and Dara and by the order of Brahma they came to this earth and had the Supreme Personality of Godhead as their son. Text 1 Shukadev Goswami said, <clears throat> O Maharaj Parikshit, the priest of the Yadu dynasty, named, namely Gargamuni, who was highly elevated in austerity and penance, was then inspired by Vasudeva to go see Nanda Maharaj at his home. Text 2 When Nanda Maharaj saw Gargamuni present at his home, Nanda was so pleased that he stood up to receive him with folded hands. Although seeing Gargamuni with his eyes, Nanda Maharaj could appreciate that Gargamuni was adhoksaja, that is, he was not an ordinary person seen by material senses. Text 3 <clears throat> When Gargamuni had been properly received as a guest and was very comfortably seated, Nanda Maharaj submitted with gentle in submissive words, Dear Sir, because you are a devotee, you are full in everything. Yet my duty is to serve you. Kindly order me. What can I do for you? <clears throat> Text 4 O oh my Lord, O oh great devotee, persons like you move from one place to another, not for their own interests, but the sake of poor, but for the sake of poor-hearted grihastas householders. Otherwise, they have no interest in going from one place to another. PURPORT As factually stated by Nanda Maharaj, Gargamuni, being a devotee, had no needs. Similarly, when Krishna comes, he has no needs, for he, for he is Purna, Atmarama. Nonetheless, he descends to this material world to protect the, dev the devotees and vanquish miscreants. Puritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam. This is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And devotees also have the same mission. Shall I repeat that? Just so everybody gets it? Think like any any objections from the from the crid from the kids. Um, 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 I forget what I he lost my Nonetheless, he descends to this material world to protect the devotees and vanquish miscreants. This is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and devotees also have the same mission. One who executes this mission of para upakara, performing welfare activities for people in general, is recognized by Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as being very, very dear to him. Nachatasman manusheshu kaschinme priyakritamaha. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has advised this para upakara, and he has especially advised the inhabitants of India, Bharata bhumite hoila manusha janmajar janmasartaka kari para para upakara. 
one who has taken his birth as a human being in the land of India, Bharat Barsha, should make his life successful and work for the benefit of all other people. C.C. Adi 9.41 On the whole, the duty of a pure Vaishnava devotee is to act for the welfare of others. Nanda Maharaj could understand that Gargamuni had come for this purpose and that his own duty now was to act according to Gargamuni's advice. Thus he said, Please tell me, what is my duty? This should be the attitude of everyone, especially the householder. The Varnashram society is organized into eight divisions, Brahmana, Chatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmacharya, <coughs> Vihasta, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. Nanda Maharaj represented himself as Grihi, a householder. A Brahmachari factually has no needs, but Grihinam, householders, are engaged in sense gratification. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Bhogaishvarya 2.44, Bhogaishvarya Prasaktanam, Tiya Pradita Chetasam. Everyone has come to this material world for sense gratification and the position of those who are too attached to sense gratification and who therefore accept the Grihasta Ashram is very precarious. Since every, everyone in this material world is searching for sense gratification, Grihastas are required to be trained as Mahat, great Mahatmas. Therefore, Nanda Maharaj specifically used the word Mahad Vichalanam. Gargamuni had no interest to serve by going to Nanda Maharaj. But Nanda Maharaj, as a Grihasta, was always perfectly ready to receive instructions from a Mahatma to gain the real benefit in life. Thus he was ready to execute Gargamuni's order. Text 5 O oh, great saintly person, <coughs> you have compiled the astrological knowledge by which one can understand past and present unseen things. By the strength of this knowledge, any human being can understand what he has done in the pa his past life and how it affects his present life. This is known to you. Purport. The word destiny is now defined. <clears throat> Unintelligent persons who do not understand the meaning of life are just like animals. Animals do not understand the past, present, and future of life, nor are, they nor are they able to understand it. Let me say that again. I misread it. Animals do not know the past, present, and future of life, nor are they able to understand it. But a human being can understand this if he is sober. Therefore, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.13, Dhiras Tatra, Namuyati. A sober person is not bewildered. The simple truth is that although life is eternal in this material world, one changes from one body to another. Foolish people, especially in this age, do not understand this simple truth. Krishna says, Dehi no smin, yata dehe, komaram jovanam jara, tatadi hantara praptir. Dhiras Tatra Namuyati As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. Bhagavad Gita 2.13 Krishna, the greatest authority, says that the body will change. As soon as the body changes, one's whole program of work changes also. Today I'm a human being, or a great personality, but with a little deviation from nature's law, I shall have to accept a different type of body. Today I'm a human being, but tomorrow I may become a dog, and then whatever activities I have performed in this life will be a failure. This simple truth is now rarely understood, but one who is a dira can understand this. 
those in this material world for material enjoyment should, uh, should know that because their present position will cease to exist, they must be careful in how they act. This is also stated by Rishabhadev. Nasadu manye yata atmano yam asan apikle shada asadeha. Bhagavatam 554. Although this body is temporary, as long as we have to live in this body, we must suffer. Whether one has a short life or a long life, one must suffer the threefold miseries of material life. Therefore, any gentleman, Dira, must be interested in Jyotisha, astrology. We have an aspiring astrologer in the room here, Bhakti Chris. He's <clears throat> Nanda Maharaj was trying to take advantage of the opportunity afforded by Gargamuni's presence for Gargamuni was a great authority in this knowledge of astrology by which one can see the unseen events of past, present and future. It is the duty of a father to understand the astrological position of his children and to do what is needed for their happiness. So you know that Prabhupada's an astrologer came in when Prabhupada was born <coughs> and did his chart and he told the family this person when he's 70 years old he will go around to out, uh, uh, internationally across the ocean and he will establish exactly 108 centers and he will become a great spiritual leader, teacher. That's the standard of astrology. But now there's very, very few of them, if any. Just like these other perf performance of sacrifice have been, you know, condemned because of a lack of proper priests. So it's a fact that to, to be that kind of astrologer as Gargamuni is very, very rare. And in Kali Yuga it's practically impossible. You can get some idea. You get some general idea about nature and so, but the, the exact precise you know, prediction of what has happened, what is happening, what will happen, that's very rarely achieved. So we shouldn't, Prabhupada didn't ask us to place much stock in it, you know, and, you know, live our life be, you know, according to our chart. Because everything changes so fast in the Kali Yuga anyway. Anyway, that's just a little tidbit that I heard from Prabhupada. Okay. It is the duty of a father to understand the astrological position of his children and do what is needed for their happiness. Now, taking advantage of the opportunity afforded by the presence of Gargamuni, Nanda Maharaj su suggested that Gar Gargamuni prepare a horoscope for Nanda's two sons, Krishna and Balarama. And here we're going to stop for tonight. Hare Krishna. And have our relishable open mic session. Yes, Prana. Uh, I really liked in text four of this chapter how um, Srila Prabhupada was emphasizing the, um, <coughs> the preaching work. He was emphasizing how uh, to make our lives successful, we have to act for the welfare of others. That's the duty of a Vaishnava. He was talking about um, Gargamuni. Yes. Basically making their lives for the benefit of others. Yes. And um, uh, I would just like to mention how when we go out to the Sankirtan, go out to the colleges, distribute books, chant Harinam, distribute prasadam, give out cards, make contacts with people. That um, it really, f it really seems like there's a transcendental level of existence that we enter into, um, and when we stop for some time, a few days, then it seems like we're not on that transcendental level anymore. Not only that, but you bring it back. It's very important. Because you bring, the preachers bring back 
that atmosphere to the temple and to the uh, to the devotees who are not doing it. This this is what is actually uh, motivating and powering our movement and making it expand. Without it, it'll just stay the same, and we'll maintain ourselves, and it'll be pious and it'll be nice, but we won't have we won't feel the same. What I'm, I'm just trying to reinforce what you said, and Prabhupada told us this. More important, and therefore the Parapakar, in many ways in the Gita, uh, it's described. Labante Brahmanir Vanam, Rishiyak China Kalmasha, China Dvaida Itatmana Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. This word sarva bhuta rite means to always be thinking about doing good for others. That is a symptom of labante brahmanirvana, liberated souls. Especially every day, become very dear to Krishna. They become actually empowered by Krishna and very, very dear to Krishna. And therefore, wherever they are, they create an atmosphere which is blissful, spiritual, and juicy. So please continue to do this and do it more and more and more. And as we build this uh, ashram, full-time devotee ashram, and have more devotees going out, and as soon as Sham Sundar constructs this other building, our goal is to have 30 brahmacharis in the morning program, every morning, dancing and chanting like peacocks, <clears throat> and going out and bringing that bliss into the temple, into the temple room in front of the deities, and the deities will respond and everyone will feel uplifted and blissful. And then Nitya will become even more empowered to bring more people. Hare Krishna. So I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. No, that was it. That was all. But it's so important. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13. You got it? Yes, two. Okay. Bhakta Marcus, future leader of ISKCON, is going to speak. <laughs> I can't help it. It's just my nature, you know. And I just, it's just the way I am, you know. Just got to put up, tolerate me. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the reading, as always. I really enjoyed text. 31, especially when it was saying, because this demon was envious, cruel, and sinful, he has been killed for his own sinful activities. Mm. This is the law of nature. Mm. And I think that it's, I believe that it's. it seems peculiar that it didn't say that Krishna killed him. It says by his own sinful activities, you know, you reap, so you shall sow. And how, you know, in Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita says, I, you know, I am the ability in man. I am the um, sound in the ether. I am, or wait, he says that in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I am the taste in, in water. And, can, and he goes on describing these things. How if we, um, how ultimately Krishna is the sanctioner, but it is our own will which will either bring us to prosper or bring us to ruination. And I just very much enjoyed this, this text. So what's the purpose of the text? Um, that it, it, it's, it's completely up to us. We can make this decision to either turn to Krishna or to turn away from Krishna. Yeah, that's for us in, as, as conditioned souls. But the purpose of the ver what's the purpose of the, I'd like to get some. What's the purpose of this? making this point. See, the point is that this is how the Brajbasis thought because they couldn't understand that Krishna was actually doing it, that he was God. This is Yoga Maya covering the Brajbasis from seeing that actually Krishna is protecting them so that they can think that providence is protecting Krishna. But in that understanding for us, so these books are like, they have layers and layers and layers of meaning and they will keep taking us capacity to understand them. They will take us into deeper and deeper layers of meaning 
so that we will be able to give ourselves and put ourselves at the feet of Krishna completely and eventually go to Krishna and forget his God and be able to just have a good time with him. We're all looking to party. Well, that's the real party. Every time you go to a party here in the material world, it ends up it's disastrous in some way or another. <laughs> you get a hangover or, you know, you get into a relationship and they dump you and you kind of rose, <laughs> you know. And then you keep looking for your, you know, soul mate and you never find them or her. And it's like, it's just one, you know, suffering after another, after another, after another. That's the destiny of material existence. So the point is, if we just surrender to Krishna and let him take care, then we will get the real thing. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, but Doug. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Maharaj. In the purport of text 29 in chapter 7, it says, In transcendental life, as soon as devotees of the Lord merge in lamentation, they immediately experience the Lord's transcendental activities and merge in transcendental bliss. Hmm. Can you um, kind of explain and elaborate on this? Is that, this me, that is talking about a pure, unalloyed devotee who is uh, experiencing rasa, who is experiencing separation from Krishna. Whenever one cannot see Krishna, a person in that consciousness uh, feels lamentation. But that lamentation is the cause of further development of love, the strength of love, until one finally falls so much in love with Krishna that they cannot bear to be without Krishna for another second. And then what seems to be a transcendental lamentation, crying and, you know, what they were experiencing when Krishna got taken up into the air, you know, uh, drives them mad. They become mad for Krishna. And therefore Krishna, it, this attracts Krishna so much that he does everything not only to make them happy and give them transcendental pleasure, but he can't live without them either. In other words, that controls Krishna. It's pure, spontaneous love without any personal motivation controls Krishna. And therefore, he can't leave the devotee any more than the devotee can leave him. And then there's no question of lamentation under any condition. The lamentation turns into transcendental bliss, the highest form of ecstasy, the most intense feelings of attachment and affection and love are to be found in serving L Krishna under the direction of Lord Chaitanya in separation. So if we cultivate hearing like this, especially now we've come to the pastimes of Krishna, it becomes more and more clear what the goal is. If while we're chanting, if while we're hearing, and when we're, we're not, if we get to the point where we can feel separation from it, and we absorb ourselves from moment to moment in some kind of devotional service or another without going away from it, we purchase Krishna, who cannot be purchased. We become fearless. Fear personified is afraid of Krishna. Therefore, when we become like that, Maya, not only will she not touch us, she'll come in front of us like this. Is there anything I can do for you? So rather than having Maya always create have it for our, in our lives and we're always in some kind of anxiety or another, we'll be in bliss because Maya will help us she will, she will withdraw material affection from us so that we can have pure affection for Krishna because pure affection for Krishna is the goal of life the lamentation of the Bajbasis 
when something's happening seemingly bad to Krishna. It has nothing to do with the kind of lamentation that we have here. Nothing to do. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anything from cyberspace? Okay, good, because it's Ekadasi and Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, everybody. Hare Krishna. All glories to the pastimes of Krishna. And uh, all glories to the, to the love of the devotees and their devo pure devotional service. And uh, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yeah. Shri Krishna Leela Ki Jai, yeah, especially yeah. Vrindavan Leela Ki Jai. Yeah, yeah. Go Premanandi! Yeah. See you tomorrow night, same place, same station, same time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.